So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by Blaine Alkers, who is currently America's only Chief Results Officer. And he'll tell a bit more about that, not only for his own company, Selfluence, but also for other companies and mastermind groups as well. So welcome to the show, Blaine. How awesome to have you here. Uh, Deborah, thank you so much for having me on the call. I am honored to be here. I am uh, been a longtime listener. I think I saw you get your maybe 85, close to 100 episodes now. And I love the show because I work with and I am a small business owner. Uh, and I love your EOS system that you teach and all the different things around that. So you're, you were uh, changing lives with this show. And so I'm happy to be here and, and hopefully I can add a little value to the listeners today. I have no doubt that you will. We've had a bit of a chat beforehand. So I've got some idea about the things that you do. But let's start with the, the kind of the obvious question, like chief results officer. What does that actually really mean? Uh, yeah. So, so basically, um, you know, I had a couple of moments of dawning comprehension where the light bulb goes off and, and you're never quite the same that led me down this path to, to helping people get results, right? And, and basically kind of becoming their chief results officer, making sure they're kind of getting stuff done. And, and a lot of times um, people struggle with personal implementation. Right. So, so getting yourself to do those things that, you know, you should do, uh, you know, we don't really need more information. We need more transformation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but people kind of know what to do, but they're not doing it. So I started, uh, for me, the, the first kind of, um, moment of dawning comprehension came when I was in college, I, I went to uh, Purdue university here in the States. And, um, I, I saw this ad and maybe like some of the listeners, I've always been a little bit of a seeker, like how can I do better? And I was, saw this ad uh, for where you could send away for um, an abridged version of the reading of a book called Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. I was actually read by Earl Nightingale, who ended up becoming one of my mentors. But uh, it was the reading of this book, Think and Grow Rich. And when I, I got the tape, it was an audio cassette, so kind of dating myself. This is back in the 80s. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I got this tape and I listened to that and I bought the book and I read the book. And I realized there in college... Uh, and I came up with a little saying called white table, which is an acronym for what you think about, you bring about. And I really, for the first time, and I think I was lucky at an early age to realize that, you know, what you think about, you bring about that, that by controlling my thoughts, um, you know, and directing those thoughts, I could literally kind of create my reality. Now, what you think about, you bring about, like you have to take action. It's, it's, it's not just a simple law of attraction, but it's kind of like the law of attraction with action. And that the lens that you look at through the day uh, really does make a difference in, in how your day turns out. So, so that was kind of like uh, dawning comprehension moment number one. Uh, the second one occurred a little bit later. Uh, so my degrees in computer science, I was working for a software company and I, I was on a long business trip and I came back home and uh, my son, who was one year old, he was kind of giving me the cold shoulder. I'm like, Beth, what's wrong with Bo? Like, why is he giving me the cold shoulder? Is he sick? She's like, no. He's not, but you were gone so long that he forgot who you were. And so that like hit me like emotionally uh, hard. And I remember when I was a kid, I came home to an empty house because both my parents worked. And so that night I made a clarifying decision. I said, no matter what, I'm going to be a work from home dad, no matter what, however long it takes. And it took me a year. I started two businesses. Um, but, but a year later, uh, you know, I was able to break free from my job uh, and, and I haven't had a job since, and that was 27 years ago. So for the last 27 years, I've worked from home before it was like cool to do so, uh, you know, work totally from home. Yeah. And, uh, and I, and I was that, that stay at home dad, work from home dad, and my kids now are all grown and, and left the nest. But what that gave me taking business ownership and creating businesses that had no daily operations on my part, uh, gave me the time to really study, uh, results and self-development. And so what I found out is, is that I really like helping people kind of take control of their lives by taking control of themselves. And so I, I call that personal implementation. And so I just start, started doing that for different groups of people, for mastermind groups. They started calling me the chief results officer because I was helping them get stuff done on a weekly basis. We try to like win the day, but also we're, we, I have everybody kind of check in on a weekly basis. And so, so they're getting those results. And I said, Hey, that's a cool title, chief results officer. So went to the U S patent and trademark office, got the registered trademark, the R with the circle. Uh, and so I am currently America's only chief results officer. And, and I think, um, 
you know, I, I'm put on the planet to help people, you know, kind of take control of their, their lives by taking control of themselves. Which I think is why I was attracted to having as a guest on the show is because obviously I work with ELS and that's all about putting traction into your business. Um, but sometimes the leaders that are doing that struggle with, you know, finding the time, finding, being able to create the habits that are required for that discipline and accountability. So you've got a couple of little things that you, you talk about and you've got a TED talk as well, haven't you? Is it, is it just the, the TED talks on the 21 seconds? Uh, have it still. So, actually, so the TED talk yep. is actually uh, about why tape, that idea of what you think about, yep. bring about. Yep. And uh, yeah, that was a bucket list item for me. Somebody submitted me. And, and I got to do that. And it's, um, yeah, that really opened a lot of doors for me. And the cool thing is kind of like all your podcast, it gets put out online like forever, right? So, so you know, that TED Talk and your podcast can touch lives not yet born. Yeah. Somebody like 20, 30 years from now, they may be listening from Mars, but they're going to hear us talking and we're going to help them in some way today. Which is fantastic. So there are a couple of things that you do like to talk about apart from that um, is, is around the 21 second habits and also uh, the 30 minute hour. So what, yes. what should we start with? What is the, what's the thing that makes the most impact do you think? Well, I, I think for uh, business owners, they are under the time crunch and, and most business owners, I, I like, I like to say, I like to move business owners from being a day behind. Sometimes they're more than a day behind, yeah. but move them to be, be caught up, to get ahead and then to be a day ahead. And so I have a, even, I've written some articles and have some trainings about the day ahead entrepreneur where you wake up and everything's done for the day. Now you might have some appointments, but you're actually working on tomorrow stuff. Um, but that is the unicorn. That is the rarity. I rarely find an entrepreneur that says, yeah, I'm not busy or a business owner. I, I, I'm not busy. I've got all the time in the world. What, what can I do for you? Uh, and so that's not the case uh, because they have this high drive, they have this high ambition. They're running this this business um, and and it's consuming a lot of their time and they, and they need more time. So I would say we start with this concept of the 30 minute hour. Mm. So the 30 minute hour is how to get an hour's worth of stuff done in just 30 minutes. Now, this is a very powerful thing. Um, and I often say powered by self-fluence. So that's the, the company that I started. Um, but in self-fluence, we talk about everything you need is within reach. You're already doing it and you could master it. So uh, we're going to show you that you already know how to have a 30 minute hour because you already had some. Now you might've forgotten and you might not do it as often as you like, but you have done it before. So there's nothing new to learn. You know how to do it. But I will say that it's very powerful. And it's so powerful that I have to make sure that the listeners use it for good and not for evil. Mm -hmm. uh, and so let's say, let's say that you and I have four 30 minute hours in a row. So that means basically we got four hours worth of stuff done in just two hours. Mm -hmm. So that gives us two guilt-free hours, two guilt-free hours that you can do anything that you want to do. Uh, and so I'm going to ask you this question in a second. What, what would you do uh, for me Two guilt free hours? And here's the key. It cannot be work. Now type A like you and me, oh, I'm just going to get two more hours of work done. No, no, let's say that it's not work. So for me, I like to ride the Peloton bike. So I might do that. I have that here in my home office. I like to go outside. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. I like to go out hiking. I also like to connect with old friends, especially friends from college back in the Purdue days. Um, and then I also like to connect with family. Um, and since I work from home, I do like the good old fashioned power nap about 15 to 20 minutes. So that's what I would do if I had the yeah. guilt free hours. What, what about you? If you had two guilt free hours, what, what would you do? So probably not, so not just so dissimilar. So we love to cycle. We've got two puppies and we've got little cycle. We've got bicycles with actual puppy seats on them. And so we probably take the dogs for a bit of a cycle. And then I, I love photography and being out in nature. So I probably pop my camera on my backpack, go out on my bike, take the dogs with me, um, go to somewhere. We've got some beautiful countryside over here. So go and take some, some photographs of some of our beautiful countryside. And then I do love to read. Uh, and not necessarily business books. You know, I do enjoy fiction books as well. So I'd probably be quite happy to go and lie, um, maybe on a beach somewhere and read a book. Fantastic. Perfect. Great answer. And hopefully the listeners, you have your little short list as well. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to take some of those things and put them back in your day as you start to have these 30 minute hours, right? So that, that a little piece of that, you know, goes into your day, something for you. Uh, and, and a lot of times it is with other people or with pets and things like that, right? Put some of that stuff in your day. Cause at the end, 
even if you ask the most successful business owners, when they get to the end of their life, they never say, I wish I would have worked more. Yeah. They always say, I wish I would have had more memorable moments with the people I love. That's number one. And then sometimes they also say, I wish I had more impact. I wish I took what I learned and what I knew and, and gave more of that back out to the world. And that's it. Those are the only two things that people, you know, say at the end. So you've got, we're going to, let, let's unlock this for you. Now there's a day, there's a day during the year. Some people, it happens more than once a year, uh, but typically at least once a year, there's this day that is the most productive day of the year. Now it's so productive that people get three to 10 times more stuff done than their ordinary day. Now that's three X to 10 X. We're only looking for two X. The 30 minute hour is just a two X or not a three to 10 X. Do you know what is this most productive day of the year? No. <laughs> okay. So when I tell you, it's going to be self-evident and then you're going to realize that you already had some 30 minute hours and that is the day before vacation. Uh, yes. So the of day course. before vacation, yep. people get three to 10 times mm -hmm the amount of stuff done than an ordinary day. And when you think about it yourself, you're like, yeah, that's, that, that's so true mm -hmm. right now. Um, so, so what I did is I went and, and this was happening for me. I was having this great productivity, uh, on the day before vacation. So I studied in detail the day before vacation and why did people get so much done and how can we bring some of that skill set that you already have nothing new, just bring that skill set into your regular day. And so I came up with a little acronym to help everybody kind of remember. So when you think 30 minute hour, think day before vacation mode, but then think PDF. Now PDF is very easy for people to remember because they know, well, it stands for portable document format. Mm -hmm. Hey, email me the PDF or uh, print out the PDF. But in our case, it stands for plan, delegate, focus. So what's different about the day before vacation, how you can have some 30 minute hours is you need to improve your planning, your delegation, and maybe, you, maybe you're deferring uh, and, and your focus. So let's talk about planning. The day before vacation, that day is super planned out. It's, it's planned out sometimes to the minute, at least by the hour. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, yep. I'm going to do this. And so if you'll just do what I call NDP, next day planning, um, you will have, you, you will get more done. You will have 30 minute hours just simply by planning alone. Now, the other thing is that on the day before vacation, people wake up 30 to 60 minutes earlier than a normal day. So that's one way you can have a 30 minute hour, just wake up 30 minutes earlier, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe you don't do that every day, but some people do it a couple times a week uh, just, to, just to get it going. Uh, the other two things about planning is one is on the day before vacation, people have a very clear vision. Like this is what has to get done. Like I'm going out of town, this has to get done. So if you get real clear about what it is you want to get done, you're less distractible, right? The day before vacation, think about all the things that don't happen. No chit chat, no long responses on email, no long phone calls, no shiny objects. No social you. media. <laughs> yeah. Right, our social media. You, you skip the news media that day too. Mm -hmm. You're really, really focused, right? So you have a clear vision of what has to get done. And then on the day before vacation, from a planning standpoint, people become the 80-20 rule expert, right? The Pareto principle. They become experts at saying, this is the 20% that produces 80% of my results. And they focus in on the 20 and they oust the 80, right? And and so um, that's the, that's kind of the big components of, of planning to give you the 30 hours. Now, the ousting of the 80, that comes into the second part here, which, uh, so P is for plan, D is for delegate. Yeah. And so what happens on the day before vacation, people ask who, before do. So they say, who could do this before I go do this? Mm -hmm. And they look to delegate and defer things, especially those things that are in the 80% that only produce 20% of your results. Uh, you know, for example, you know, my wife will say, I'm going to run some errands. You know, can I do anything for you? Oh yeah. You can go to the bank, post office, da, 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 da. And now I just had a 30 minute hour because I delegated to her things. You become very good at delegation and you need to bring that back into your normal day. So, so even just thinking who before do you say, I'm about to do this thing. Who else could do this? Thing, right. So look to delegate, but then also look to defer those, those lower value tasks. Cause that's, this is what happens on the day before vacation. You know, you, you, you defer stuff. I, I can't get that done. So it's going to have to be done later or done by somebody else when I'm gone. Right. So really look to increase that. And then where I personally get my most 30 minute hours 
comes from the F, which stands for focus. So plan, delegate, focus. Mm -hmm. So on the day before vacation, people have this weird, fierce focus, right? <laughs> uh, and um, uh, they, they become very strong-willed, uh, you, you know, like you said, no chit-chat and, and no no social media, news media. Um, and, and another thing is, let, let's see, do you, let's see, you're, you're originally on the British side. So, so yes. do you like James Bond movies? Oh, yes. Do you know what the very first James Bond movie from 1963 was? Not off the top of my head. Now I'd have to probably Google it. <laughs> okay, so you just said the name of it in your response, which which oddly happens most of the time when I ask people that, because it was Dr. No. That was the very first movie. And so what happens is on the day before vacation, you have such a fierce focus that you become Dr. No. Right, so blank, can you do this? Blank, can you do this? No, 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 no. I have no time. I'm on, the, I've got a vacation I'm going on. I don't, I, my day is already filled. Yeah. And so if you will just bring Dr. No back into your regular day and make no your default response, that's going to give you more productivity. That's going to give you more 30 minute hours. And even more important than giving you a 30 minute hour is that Dr. No avoids the 90 minute hour. The 90 minute hours where someone asks for an hour of your time and it takes 90 minutes. Of course, somebody says, can I just have 10 minutes of your time? And it takes a half hour. It's like, ah, uh, my, you know, no, yeah. what did I do? Uh, you know, so doctor, no. Uh, the other thing about focus is that people on the day before vacation, they tend to stay on schedule more. So they, they have scheduled appointments. Mm -hmm. they, they, they typically don't run over because they can't and they use timers. Uh, you know, so for example, I know that if I've got to do some internet research uh, or I'm going into social media, that's a trap for me. So I tell Siri to set an alarm for 15 minutes or timer for 15 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever I want. And, and if I need more time, I'll set another timer, but I'm using timers all day long, all day long for, for many of my tasks. Uh, and that's what people are doing, you know, on the day before vacation and say, look, I only got 30 minutes to write this article. I got to do it, yeah. get it done. Um, so, so that's, um, that's on the timers. And the last part of focus, and this is where I personally get my most 30 minute hours is people on the day before vacation, they become tasking masters. It's like a thing of beauty. Like when I say you already have the skill, you already have it. Yep. And there's three types of tasking, single tasking, multitasking, and batch tasking. And so single tasking, that's where I, I actually get my most 30 minute hours is when it's a task that only you can do, you do best, and you totally focus in on that task and you remove all distractions. Now, what I mean by that is like the phone is in airplane mode, or maybe it's even turned off, mm -hmm. right? I only have like, let's say, for example, I can get an hour's worth of article writing done in 30 minutes if I will turn the phone off maybe even turn my Wi-Fi off so there's no way to get to me. But I got my screen and I'm just typing and there's no rings, dings, bings. There's no distractions whatsoever. Um, that's where I get my most work done is really shut out the world and do that single tasking. Now, in the beginning, when I started that, I did have a little bit of the monkey mind. And so like I get some idea why I'm trying to do my single focus. And for that, just have a scrap piece of paper and just quickly write the thing down and then just come back to what you're doing. So in the beginning, I might be interrupted in a 30 minute segment, you know, by 10 ideas, right? But then it was three ideas and now it's pretty much only maybe one or two ideas. Mm -hmm. I still capture those ideas, but then I get right back to the single, uh, you know, the single tasking uh, mode. So that's where I personally get my most. The Another one that I do like is multitasking, which does get a bad rap. And some mm -hmm. people say you can't do it, but you can. But But proper multitasking is when you do two things at the same time, without sacrificing the quality of either one, right? So I like, I can't work on my email and be on this podcast. Yeah. That's not, uh, you know, I can't have high quality uh, there, but I can talk on my hands-free phone while I'm driving a car, right? Sure. So yeah. I'm doing, I'm getting an hour's worth of driving in and an hour's of phone calls in, you know, or 30 minutes of driving and 30 minutes of the phone call. So an hour's worth of stuff done in just 30 minutes. Uh, I used to love to exercise, but I love family time. So we taught the family to play tennis sure. so we could go out and do tennis for 30 minutes, but then also have 30 minutes of family time. So you're looking for that. Uh, where are those times when you're exercising? Great time to listen to a podcast like this one. Uh, you know, so, so there's these things that you can do uh, at, at the same time uh, of high quality, both of high without, quality. Without affecting the quality of either of them. Yeah, yeah. And then the last part is batch tasking. 
And that is, you, you're an expert at that on the day before vacation. If you had three errands to run, you're not going to run one, come back, run one, come back. No, you go out, you run, you batch them together, right? So you can batch errands together. You do that. I also like, uh, I watched people on the day before vacation, they batch their interruptions. And I love that. I learned so much from that. And, and the way they did it is they, they went to the, to their business or whatever, and they told their, their staff from nine to 11, I'm going to be in single tasking mode with this door closed. Don't come in here unless there's a fire. But at 11, I will emerge uh, and let's have a 20 minute kind of open meeting. And you can ask me all the questions you were going to ask me during those first two hours of the day. Right. And so they batched together almost in like an office hours methodology. They batched all those interruptions. Right. So they had time to kind of get their stuff done. My wife and I, we used to like text each other a lot and that would be interrupting. Um, but then we realized in the iPhone, we can have a shared note where we can just add stuff. The other person sees it, but only when you open the note, like if we're having lunch together or something like that. So Ooh. there's ways to do, uh, you know, even to, to batch, but if you batch your phone calls, do them all back to back, you'll, you'll get more done. Uh, if you batch your computer work, uh, all those different things that, that, that are batchable, uh, and the overriding day before vacation, the, the overriding kind of, uh, feeling of it is that it releases your inner perfectionist, right? So the day before vacation releases your inner perfectionist and done is better than perfect. You know, it's got to get done and, and you move forward. So when you think, think of the, uh, you know, uh, 30 minute hour day before vacation, PDF plan, delegate focus, uh, and you can bring those back. You know how to do it. You already did it back on that day before vacation, but you can master it by bringing some of that stuff back in. Not maybe not the stress of getting ready for vacation, <laughs> Uh, but then also at the end of the day, a lot of times people will give themselves a little reward, like some little reward. Maybe it's reading like those things that we talked about mm. at the beginning of, of, uh, of this, you know, discussion of the 30 minute hour, those things you like to do. I'll give myself a Peloton bike ride. You might go out for some photography or read a good, you know, a book, you know, th things like that. So that is, that is the 30 minute hour deep dive. And that is fantastic. I, I was just grinning to myself the entire time. So I think whenever I go on holiday, I'm exactly like that. I'm so focused. You know, I'm, I've got I've got my plan for the day. I've, I'm um, definitely delegating and deferring a whole lot of stuff and just focused and getting stuff done. So yes, it, it makes perfect sense. And you're absolutely right. There's nothing new in there. It's just how do we actually apply that to our work day as well? And how do we get the best quality out of our work hours? Yeah. And I, you know, I have a little reminder thing, you know, uh, note in my office here, you know, day before vacation, mode. Yeah. you know, and sometimes I'm, I'm in such that mode people, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm in day, day before vacation mode. And they go, where are you going? Oh, I'm not going anywhere, but I'm just <laughs> maximizing my productivity today. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's, it, it can be fun. Um, but it really, really works. So just, yeah, just give one of those a try. And, um, I also really love the idea of setting timers too, because I think that, uh, I am, I'm highly distractible as in, I, you know, I'm very, very easily distracted and I can go down a rabbit hole in a heartbeat. So I might just suddenly hop onto LinkedIn just to quickly check something. And the next thing you know, you know, an hour has gone and I haven't achieved anything. So just being able to set a timer, uh, whether that's a physical timer or it's on your, on your Siri or whatever, just sort of to remind yeah. you that actually time is passing. That's a fantastic idea. Yeah, I do that. I just tell Siri, you know, it's a very easy voice command. You know, I, I'm doing that kind of all day long and, 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 you know, having that schedule too, like if you, the, you know, I know the, the world is going to come in and mess up your schedule, mm -hmm. but if you plan it out, you have a plan, you're less distractible if you will kind of fill your day out. Right. So I, I kind of have my day broken out by the hour, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'll fill it in. And, and sometimes I got thinking time and, and, you know, free time and different things in there, but really kind of fill it out because then when you cross over from one hour to another, you know, you don't. You won't get stuck in that one task and let it kind of, you know, take over four hours of your time or something like that. Hey, look, I'm conscious we haven't got a huge amount of time, but I'm just wondering, is there any way, because you do talk about how you actually create habits as well. So it's great to say, hey, look, we can do these 30 minute hours, but how do you make that a habit? Yeah, yeah. So let's talk real quickly about, let me give you an introduction to this concept of 21 second habits, right? How to create a new habit in 21 seconds, not 21 days. If they told you it takes 21 days, somebody lied to you. We're sorry about that. Uh, uh, neurologically, neurologically, brain chemistry wise, uh, the habits begin to form in about 21 days and it takes 63 days to really have it wired on its own. But we're going to give you a little mind hack to get, to get around that. Uh, and, and so I'll just tell a brief story here. My wife 
this is how I kind of discovered this. My wife uh, used to have, it's past, past tests, nearly daily migraine headaches. And so the uh, doctor said, look, you got to fill out this headache log with like what you eat, what are the triggers, what's the weather, what's the barometric pressure, all these different things. And my wife would fill it out for a couple of days, then she would lose it, then she'd forget to fill it out. She couldn't go more than three or four days. And one night, yeah, we're thinking about how can we fix this, solve this problem? She needs this habit of filling this out every single day. It's like critical to her health. And I was watching her brush her teeth. And, uh, and I said, you know, Beth, you're, you're a master at brushing your teeth two minutes, just like the dentist says in the morning and at night. And, uh, when's the last time you didn't brush your teeth? And she couldn't remember. It was years. Mm -hmm. And when I asked this in workshops, you know, all the hands go up, you know, everyone's brushed their teeth in the last 24 hours and, and everyone has done it for years. So I want you to realize up front, kind of uh, like we talked about before, you're already doing it. You're already a master at many, many habits like brushing your teeth. So what we did is my wife just took her headache log, put her toothpaste and toothbrush on top of it. Yeah. And when she brushed her teeth for those two minutes, she'd fill it out. Now she had four prime time minutes every day, no willpower required, happens all the time. She knows where the log is 24 seven. And she went 90 days in a row filling that thing out, got it to the doctors. And, and, and today she, maybe every, every couple of months, she'll have a migraine. So it's very, very much improved. So, so the first key here to the 21 second habits is what's called habit linking, where you link it to a habit that you're already a master at, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so like, when I looked at that, I said, look, I want to start two new habits that happened for me every day. One was this Bible app I had. I wanted to do that every day. But the other one was I realized I was better when I took a mind shower. Now, now most people take like a physical shower, but I wanted to take a mind shower every morning, just like I took a physical shower where I wash out kind of the dirt and the head trash, you know, from my mind from the previous day, which if you're on social media or news media, or you interact with anybody in the world, you're going to have some, some head trash from the day before. I wanted to wash that out. So I said, what can I have it link that to? And I said, what do I do every morning without fail, no willpower required? What's the first thing I do? Because I want to do it first thing. And I realized that the smartphone, mm -hmm. the iPhone, that was, the, I opened that every morning without fail. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what I did is I moved all the apps off my homepage on my iPhone. And I just put the Bible app in an app called Headspace, which is an, a, a meditation and app you can use yeah. for my jar. And, and so when I open my phone every day, I said, I have to do those two things before I do anything else. And that's the second key to the 21 second habit is urge surfing. To get yourself to do the new habit, you need to surf some urge that you have for something else. So when I open my phone, my son lives in Denmark, uh, you know, and there are a lot of times there's text messages, right? And you can see that little bubble down there. I've got text messages or I've got new orders that came in, or I want to know what's out. How, what are my finances? What's going on in the world? Like all this stuff. I want my email, right? It's all there on my phone. But I, I say, no, I surf the urge to want to do that, to get me to do those other two things. And what I like about those apps is they track how many days you've done it in a row. So today was like day 1703, you know, so it's many, many years. Uh, that that I, I haven't missed that habit. And I started that habit instantly by habit linking and then urge, urge surfing. So there's so many things that you do on a daily, more than once a day, like teeth brushing or once a day, like opening your phone for the first time or getting dressed or driving to work. There's so many habits that you have that you can already use to link to. And then once you link it for 21 days, yes, it begins to form 63 days. It kind of can stand on its own. And I do love the idea because you're absolutely right. The first thing I always reach for in the morning is my phone. Um, and I love the idea because I, I, you know, you're immediately bombarded with whatever's on your homepage, which can be stuff that completely takes you off again, down a rabbit hole, not necessarily the right path. So by changing that whole homepage, just the things that are most important will fundamentally make a difference to the way you use your phone, right? <laughs> yeah. And you're going to open that phone every day. So yeah. whatever you want to do, if you want to be reminded of uh, the person you want to become, you want to be reminded of a goal. You want to do a little meditation. Now, now I like a 10 minute mind shower, but if I'm sh strapped for time, I'll do a three minute one. I got three minutes, right? Yeah. You know, so, so you might have to nano size. You might have to shrink it down because you want to win early, win often, mm. uh, and, 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 and become, get it really small, but whatever you want to do, yeah, make it first thing in the morning. Then you kind of want, you, you've already won the day a little bit, yeah. which is a good feeling. I think I may have done a little bit of this subconsciously. I've actually got in my shower, I've got my laminated um, sheet of things that I like to remind myself of every day, uh, which means that every morning when I'm in the shower, I'm actually reading what my goals are for the year, what my intentions are, and a little bit of a, uh, a mantra that I like to remind myself of. So 
Yes, I think it's... Um, yeah. You're already doing it. Yeah. See, you're already doing it. And that linking to the shower is great. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I've got some calf exercises that I link to the shower. I have a little stretching that I do with the towel that happens every time I, I take that shower. And you don't have to remember to take the shower. It's already, it's already there. It's already had it. Gosh, that's, that's fantastic. Awesome. Wow. Okay. Well, we already have many, many, many tips from you. And I'm really grateful for you for sharing that. But if you had to kind of come across the top three things that somebody can do, to help make you know their, their their life or their business better, what would be your three top tips, Lane? Uh, so I was thinking about this um, because you actually told me at the beginning that I might have to talk about that. So this was very good. So I'm going to go with the three M's. Three M's. And the three okay. M's I have are mentor, mindset, and move. So mentor, I would highly recommend that you surround yourself with mentors. Now this podcast is a mentor of yours. If you're in a home based business, um, you know, you can use that, but, but seek out people and maybe, you know, my number one mentor in my life was Jim Rohn. Uh, he's no longer with us, but through audio, he is with us, right? Or through what I remember of him and all of his teachings, I can kind of picture him in my mind and, and get advice from him, but, but get a mentor, surround yourself with, with mentors. Number two is mindset. Understand the power of your mind. I wish I understood this earlier. You know, um, and, and I got a glimpse of, a glimpse of it in college, uh, but it took me a number of years after that to realize the power your mind has to really craft your life. Now, I'm not saying you can control circumstance. You can't, but it's, you know, it, it's not what happens that determines your life future. It's what you do about what happens, right? And that mind is so powerful. And, and it's also, you know, your reality is created by that the mindset by the lens of your mindset, right? So like if I, if I said, oh, Deborah, today's going to be one of the worst days of your life. And then you're almost hit by a car and you say, oh my gosh, blame was right. I was almost hit by the car. This is my worst. And physically you're going to be scared. You're going to be nervous and what other bad things are going to happen. And it's, it's going to be a terrible day, but physio physiologically, you're going to be trembling and, and you're fearful, right? Yeah. But in that same day, the same circumstance in the morning, I said to you, Deborah, today's going to be one of the best days of your life. Something's going to happen. Magical. Same thing happens. You're almost hit by the car. And then you say, whoa, Blaine was right. I was spared. I wasn't killed. The universe has a reason for me to be here. And you're excited and you're uplifted. And what, 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 you know, what is my purpose in life? I'm still here. I wasn't killed. And it's the same aspect, but you're physiologically and how you interpret that is so different. So that lens mindset, that's so key. You can change your life quickly. Um, you know, by changing that mindset and that, and that lens. And the last one is move. And that just means take action, yeah. right? You, you, you've got to, you've got to move to make things happen. You, you can't steer a parked car, get moving. Even if you're moving in the wrong direction, I'd rather you be moving so you can see that you are moving in the wrong direction and get going in the right direction, but you got to take action. And, uh, you know, knowledge is not transformation, right? Transformation comes from you taking actions, right or wrong, learning, getting better. And that's what you can do every day right? You only have to beat one person and that's your yesterday self. You beat your yesterday self. You got, you, you, you got it. You got it made. And just from your experience alone and learning from that, even if it was a bad day, you can, you can always kind of beat that yesterday self. Gosh, yeah, I love it. Okay. So that's mentor mindset and move the three M's. Hey Blaine, it's been an absolute pleasure. I love doing these podcasts as I meet the most amazing people. I get to learn a little bit every day myself, which is always great. In terms of people finding out more about you and finding out more about how they can work with you, how they can get this information, how do we get hold of you? Yeah, I think the easiest thing is to just grab my TEDx talk. So just go to BlaineTEDx.com. So B-L-A-I-N-E-T-E-D-X.com. Mm -hmm. You can opt in to get my talk. Um, you get a transcript of it. And then we'll be connected through email. So you can reach out. You'll um, uh, you'll get some emails about me and, and the articles that I do and write. I, I run these things called Super Results Days. They're a lot of fun. So yeah, that, that, would, that would be the same. Fantastic. Okay. So that's Blaine, B-L-I-N-E, TEDx.com. And yeah, as you said, you, -I -N -E. yep, B -L -O -N -E, .com. and there they can sign up and they can actually be in contact with you and they can email you directly if they wish to as well. Yeah, sure. Fantastic. Yeah. Look, hey, thank you so much for your time. Uh, really, really appreciate it. I'm going to go, I actually haven't had a chance to watch that TEDx talk yet. I, I saw it, but I haven't had a chance to watch it. So I'm going to make myself an extra half an hour by having a, a 30 minute hour today. And then I'm going to spend that time watching that TEDx talk. So Thank you for your time, Blaine. Really appreciate it. Um, look forward to um, keeping in contact and uh, yeah, following with interest what you get up to. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. Great to be a part of it. Uh, and, and I'll leave the listeners with this. The bad news, the bad news is that time flies. The good news, you're the pilot. 
So pilot well, my friends, pilot well. Awesome. Thank you so much.